Sometimes an inexplicable happening can give you a preternatural sense that the universe is telling you to do something. Maybe I should try this pumpkin knocky because there's a shark in it. Maybe I put it there. I am part of the universe though, so whether or not that makes any difference is a matter of some debate. Either way, I don't want a shark Pringle. Hold on. Shark Pringle? Shark pr Shark Pinball? Of course! I own the game Shark Pinball. I bought it sometime last year. And it is Shark Week, of course, and it's about time for a review of Shark Pinball. Everything it is, and more. Presents Shark Pinball. So calm and matter of fact, it's not the voice I expected, though my expectations were coloured by years of cheesy American shark documentaries and games like The House of the Dead. Anyway, you choose your country so the game knows where to send back your remains, and you can look at the controls. Triggers and bumpers activate the flippers. Everything else shakes or tilts the pinball table, so don't touch it. Use the touchpad to change views. There are not many options, only audio settings, vibration, and a vertical mode I'll get to later. For now, here's the game. The first thing I did was hit an octopus in the back of its poor head for a skill shot. Yep. Hit the octopus 25 times to trigger octopus attack. It's a very patient octopus. Anyway, everything you hit in this table counts down something, except for the great white shark head that sits there and watches. Eventually, that shark does something, but it's the main event, the grand finale. First, you have to deal with all the other sea creatures. The octopus at the front, the spinning starfish, the jellyfish bumpers, and the two smaller sharks up the back in the upper playfield. Shall we go visit those two sharks, or would you like a few words from our sponsor? I don't have a sponsor. Let's just go look at the sharks. So, when you hit the ball up to the back, it occasionally disappears into an almost completely invisible tunnel that pops it up onto an upper playfield. Oh, that's some exciting pinball right there. There are some sharks that you can hit. They do nothing. Well, they provide points, but they don't do anything greater than that. Your goal here is to repair the ship, which gives you a ball saver. Or you can spin the boy, which does something. Or you can hit that ramp, which leads to exciting things. The other exciting mainstay of pinball is a multi-ball mode. In this case, it is triggered by... Um, I have no idea. It seemed to start when I hit the jellyfish, but the jellyfish countdown wasn't over, so I... I don't know. This game is very bad at explaining things. There is no table guide. You've got to figure the whole thing out yourself somehow. Now, this multiball mission is called Fishing With. That's it, just Fishing With. Uh, hitting something increases the Fishing With jackpot. I wish I could tell you more about how it works, but I just don't know. The only people who could tell you were the developers, Super Power Up Games, based in Barcelona, and they have made a dozen pinball games just like this, with no explanations. So now the Fishing With mission is over, because I drained the other two balls. The multi-ball is ended, I've repaired the ship again, so I have another ball save. Things are going well. The ramp has been moved by hitting the boy enough times to move it. Rolling the ball over the ramp opens the shark's mouth. Now we're really going places. This is exciting pinball. To have that feature of the shark finally do its part. This is what shark pinball is all about. So, one can assume the best thing to do now would be to shoot for the mouth of the shark for some sort of jackpot. The shark's mouth closes in the gate. The game is... the game is over. I lost the game? How? I thought I was doing everything right. I hit the ball into... Oh, hold on a minute. It hit the side of the shark's mouth. No! Wait, what is this impossible movement? Is there an invisible wall around the shark? I think there is. Call the video ref, the third umpire, the bunker, get them onto this. Looking at incident frame by frame, take it back two frames. Ball glances off left edge of shark's mouth and goes into plunger lane and disappears. Uh, playback at quarter speed. 
Trajectory change consistent with invisible wall. Original decision, game over. Final verdict, game over, but bull shark. Having your hopes dashed by a dodgy shark mouth is never fun, but in shark pinball there are plenty of other annoying ways to lose, such as the ball bouncing off the octopus into the out lanes. Unavoidable deaths that feel like bad luck rather than bad skill are never fun. And yet, the shark mouth was probably my biggest source of vexation because I wanted to shoot for it. And yet, as it turns out, extremely counterintuitively, you're not supposed to. My ball was not running off the side of the shark's mouth. That's supposed to be the shark eating it. Although that sound is supposed to be the mission timing out. So in that clip before, the mission timed out and the shark ate me at the same time. Wonderful! What you're really supposed to do in this elaborate mission is ignore every fibre of your being telling you to shoot the ball into the shark's mouth and instead shoot for the ramp that is lit on the left five times and then there's probably more steps I'll probably never find out. The table is just a nasty one. Whether it's being bounced into the shark's mouth or out lanes during a multi-ball. An eight second multi-ball. All right, maybe that was a skills problem. How about this? The ball gets stuck. I have to tilt it out of there. And it's straight down the out lane. Seriously? Being a virtual pinball table, this game has fully embraced its virtualness, what with its fully animated octopus toy and moving sharks and animated water texture over the whole table. But you know what? That animated water texture bugs out my eyes. It makes me feel like I've got chlorine in them or I should be putting on 3D glasses. It kind of looks 3D. Happy 20th anniversary, Spy Kids 3D. Damn. 20 years. So I've had those 3D glasses for like 17 years, at least. Uh, anyway. Um, sound. That's the other thing. Look, I like sound. And I like pinball sounds. But this game doesn't have very many pinball sounds. It has clicks and clunks. But no... Because it's all dominated by this loud orchestral music. And yes, it sets the mood and creates excitement. But I think it sets the mood for a shark film. An independently produced shark disaster movie could go well with this soundtrack. But a shark pinball table... Not so much. Hey, I haven't yet shown you vertical mode. Oh yeah, vertical mode. Yep, I'll just play with my head tilted like this and appreciate the extra screen real estate afforded to the pinball table by this portrait orientation. I don't have a TV that I can turn onto its right side, but I can turn my head to the left and then I can just about experience the full vertical screen filling pinball experience which is bigger. Hmm. And remember that's head to the left or TV to the right. Because if you turn your TV to the left or your head to the right, the game will go into Tasmanian mode. Ah, that's better. Now, why would you be playing Shark Pinball over Pinball FX3's Jaws Pinball? Is that a better Shark Pinball game? I don't know, I've only played the free trial because that game is more expensive. I suppose that's one reason. That's one pretty obvious reason. Shark Pinball is at full price in Australia, $4.55, and it's very frequently half price. So for about $2.26, you can have Shark Pinball, whereas other pinball tables cost a few dollars more. Granted, other pinball tables are much, much better, but they aren't Shark Pinball, and you are here because you want sharks. Sharks are exciting. Sharks really... <coughs> sharks make me sneeze. Sharks are, um... I lost my train of thought with the sneeze. How about an animation? With 300 knife-like serrated teeth in its jaw, the great white shark is well equipped to be the ultimate predator of the sea. Wow. I don't know. I haven't watched a pay TV shark documentary in a long time, but I'm sure there's at least one or ten or a hundred very similar to that. So Shark Pinball. It's not the best pinball out there, but it is the sharkest. Jaws Pinball had only two sharks, and this one clearly has two and a half or so. 
I'm not sure how to count the sharks. I am sure that you should know this. If you're going to play this game, the bait bonus is where a lot of the points come from. And since the bait bonus is changed by hitting the flippers, as you see the lights on the letters move all the time, you should always be making sure if the ball's going to go down the right in lane to flip it until the light goes off on the eye so you can turn it back on because when you light all four letters you get 200,000 points as you see there. I don't know what the light in the dark thing does. I don't know what most of this does. I don't know if I'll ever get 15 million points. I don't know why I didn't spend this time playing Luminez instead. I've been getting really into Luminez Remastered lately. Actually I have been playing that quite a lot. But I could have reviewed it first rather than Shark Pinball, but I guess it was just time for a shark episode. I could have been playing Lethal League. Gee, that's fun. You could do that. Instead of buying Shark Pinball, you could buy an actually good game. But Shark Pinball is probably cheaper than either of those two. Probably. There's probably some really good deals on Steam. Who knows? On PS4 at least, Shark Pinball is the cheapest of those games. And you get what you pay for. This is definitely... $2.26 worth of shark action, considering that going to an arcade to play some terrible ticket redemption game would also cost the same amount. I'm 128th on the leaderboard at the moment with 9,429,456 points, and that's Shark Pinball. Sharks, you know. Many of them are endangered. Many of these little plastic creatures represent endangered animals. The sawfish that you saw back there, the manta ray, and the hammerheads. A lot of people sitting at home don't realize that hammerhead sharks, because you don't see them out in your backyard, they're critically endangered due to the fin trade and overcatch and many other things threatening sharks. Which I suppose is the point of Shark Week. Raising awareness for these sorts of things. And I suppose I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's 1.30 a.m. and I'm sick of doing takes. So here is all sorts of footage of sharks I don't even know. Snake of Bacon signing out soon after I tell you about sharks. This is a basking shark. And they're one of the largest filter feeding sharks. A little bit smaller than the whale shark. You can see there lies an octopus an eel, manta ray again. I was trying to tell you about the, the sawfish. The sawfish is a really cool member of the ray family with teeth on the outside of its rostrum and they're critically endangered as well. I have a lot of plastic sharks. Alright, Snake of Bacon signing out.